there's a whole set of ratios and proportions embedded in creation itself. So it looks like they were using a unit of measurement that was a sub-multiple of a mile. Is that a coincidence? No. Imagine stepping back in time, all the way back to 3000 BCE, when the landscape of Wiltshire, England, began to change in a way that would capture the imagination of humanity for millennia. This was the start of what we now know as Stonehenge, a monument that has puzzled historians, archaeologists, and tourists alike. Its construction spanned over several millennia, transitioning through the Neolithic into the Bronze Age, a period marked by profound social and technological transformations. The most iconic phase of Stonehenge's construction kicked off around 2600 BCE and lasted until 1600 BCE. This era saw the erection of the stone circles that have become synonymous with mystery and ancient ingenuity. But what if there's more to Stonehenge than meets the eye? Sure, its astronomical alignments are impressive, but could these be clues pointing to a function far beyond our current understanding? Some speculate that Stonehenge might have served as an early warning system for asteroids, given its precise alignments with celestial events. Let's delve into the monument itself. Stonehenge's architecture is a marvel of ancient engineering, comprising two main types of stones, the hefty sarsens and the slightly less imposing bluestones. The sarsens, giant sandstone blocks weighing as much as 25 tons, were sourced from Marlborough Downs, about 20 miles away. On the other hand, the bluestones, which still weigh up to 4 tons, present a bit more of a mystery. Believed to have been transported over 150 miles from the Preseli Hills in Wales, their journey to Stonehenge's site speaks volumes about the monument's significance to its builders. It suggests a level of organization, manpower, and technological innovation that we're only beginning to fully appreciate. The construction techniques employed are nothing short of remarkable. Imagine shaping these massive stones with nothing more than tools made from deer antlers, wooden mallets, and ropes. The larger sarsen stones were carefully arranged in a post and lintel structure, using mortise and tenon joints for added stability. This method wasn't just about ensuring the monument's durability, it was also about achieving aesthetic harmony with the surrounding landscape. It showcases an advanced grasp of engineering principles that challenges our modern perceptions of ancient civilizations. So, as we marvel at the enduring legacy of Stonehenge, the question remains, was it simply a feat of engineering and a place of gathering? Or did it serve a higher, perhaps even cosmic, purpose? The astronomical precision of its layout hints at a deeper connection with the cosmos, perhaps even serving as a sentinel against celestial threats. Delving into the past of Stonehenge, we uncover a timeline of discovery and insight that stretches from the curious minds of the 17th century to the advanced technological investigations of today. The journey begins with John Aubrey, an antiquarian who in the 17th century embarked on some of the first systematic studies of this enigmatic site, identifying what came to be known as the Aubrey Holes, circular pits surrounding the monument. Fast forward to the 20th century, and the baton was passed to pioneers like William Gowland and later, the collaborative efforts of Richard Atkinson, Stuart Piggott, and John F.S. Stone. Their extensive excavations peeled back layers of time, offering a glimpse into the construction techniques and chronological layers that have shaped our current understanding of Stonehenge. But it's the recent findings that have truly revolutionized our comprehension of this prehistoric marvel. With the advent of modern techniques such as radiocarbon dating, ground-penetrating radar, and DNA analysis, the curtain has been pulled back to reveal the people who built Stonehenge and the society they inhabited. Analysis of human remains unearthed at the site indicates that some individuals might have traveled from as far away as Wales, suggesting a network of connections that spanned across regions. Moreover, the Stonehenge Hidden Landscapes project has unveiled a broader ceremonial landscape, revealing that Stonehenge is but one part of a vast complex of monuments, including burial mounds and additional henges. The mystery deepens with the discovery of the bluestone quarries in Wales, pinpointed as the source of the monument's smaller stones. The uncovering of prehistoric stone tools at these quarries sheds light on the monumental effort involved in their extraction and transportation, painting a picture of a society capable of remarkable feats. The intrigue of Stonehenge isn't limited to its origins and construction. Its astronomical alignments are equally captivating. 
suggesting a profound understanding of the cosmos among its builders. The monument's alignment with the solstices is particularly striking. On the summer solstice, the sun rises in perfect harmony with the heelstone, casting a shadow that stretches to the monument's heart. This alignment is not merely coincidental, but suggests a deliberate architectural intent to mark the sun's cyclical journey, serving purposes that might have ranged from the religious to the agricultural, or even as a prehistoric timekeeping device. But the celestial connections don't end with the sun. Stonehenge also boasts complex lunar alignments, believed to correspond with the moon's extreme rising and setting positions during its major and minor standstills, a cycle known as the Metonic Cycle. Among the many theories proposed about its purpose, one particularly intriguing idea is the asteroid detection hypothesis. This speculative theory suggests that the ancient architects of Stonehenge possessed an advanced understanding of the cosmos, enabling them to track and predict celestial events, including potentially hazardous asteroids. While not widely embraced in the academic community, this theory underscores the belief that Stonehenge's builders were far more sophisticated in their astronomical knowledge than often recognized, perhaps monitoring the skies for signs of impending danger from above. Equally fascinating is the theory that Stonehenge served as a healing sanctuary. Archaeological discoveries of numerous human remains near the site, many showing signs of illness or injury, support this notion. The blue stones integral to the monument's structure are reputed to have healing properties, suggesting Stonehenge was a place of pilgrimage for those seeking physical and spiritual healing across prehistoric Europe. This idea paints Stonehenge not just as a monument of astronomical significance, but as a center of immense cultural and spiritual importance, where ancient peoples sought solace and renewal. Another captivating theory proposes Stonehenge as a portal to the ancestors, a sacred site where the living could connect with the dead or divine entities. Supported by the burial of human remains dating back to the monument's earliest phases, this theory is further enriched by Stonehenge's precise alignments with celestial events, particularly the solstices. These alignments may have symbolized the eternal cycles of life, death and rebirth, with Stonehenge acting as a bridge between the earthly and the ethereal. Exploring comparisons with other ancient monuments offers additional insights into Stonehenge's significance. Newgrange in County Meath, Ireland, shares Stonehenge's fascination with astronomical phenomena, with its main passage aligned to catch the winter solstice sunrise. Though differing in construction, Stonehenge's open-air circles contrast with Newgrange's covered passage and chamber both sites demonstrate a deep engagement with the movements of the sun, reflecting a widespread prehistoric concern with celestial cycles. Another comparison with the pyramids of Giza in Egypt further highlights the diversity of ancient engineering and astronomical understanding. Both Stonehenge and the pyramids are aligned with astonishing precision to astronomical phenomena, yet they serve different purposes and employ different construction techniques. Stonehenge's alignment with the solstices might have functioned as a prehistoric calendar, while the pyramid's orientation towards the cardinal points and specific stars speaks to their own unique cosmological significance. Randall Carlson takes us on a fascinating journey through the lens of sacred geometry and ancient wisdom, revealing how some of the world's most iconic structures are not merely feats of architectural brilliance, but also vast repositories of complex mathematical, astronomical, and metaphysical knowledge. His exploration suggests that the ancients had a grasp of the cosmos and the fundamental principles of reality that goes far beyond what we often give them credit for. This idea nudges us towards rethinking the old knowledge and pondering its relevance in today's scientific and philosophical realms. Take, for example, the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's not just a wonder of the ancient world for its sheer size and durability, but also for how it embodies the principles of sacred geometry. Carlson points out that the pyramid might encode significant mathematical constants like pi and the golden ratio, essential for understanding circular geometry and the aesthetics of proportion respectively. The notion that the pyramid's dimensions could reflect such profound mathematical concepts suggests an architectural aim intertwined with deep symbolic meaning, possibly mirroring the ancient Egyptians' cosmic understanding and their view of the universe's order. But the Great Pyramid is just the starting point. Carlson dives deeper, suggesting that ancient constructions were intentionally designed to convey wisdom about the cosmos and the very structure of reality. The alignment of many ancient structures with celestial bodies 
The harmonic principles reflected in their dimensions and the metaphysical insights they offer all hint at a sophisticated ancient understanding of numerical relationships and their resonance with the cosmos. These structures could thus be seen as keys to unlocking the mysteries of reality, embodying a worldview that perceived the universe as an interconnected whole, governed by geometric and mathematical laws. One of the most intriguing aspects of Carlson's theory is the idea of a global grid of sacred sites, connected through energy lines or ley lines. This concept extends beyond the Great Pyramid to include other monumental sites like Stonehenge, Machu Picchu, and the Nazca Lines. According to this theory, these sites were not randomly chosen but strategically placed to tap into the Earth's natural energies for spiritual, healing or knowledge-enhancing purposes. This global network suggests a sophisticated, perhaps even universal understanding of Earth's energies and their importance to human consciousness and civilization, an understanding that may have been deliberately concealed or lost over millennia. Through Carlson's eyes, we're invited to look at ancient structures, not just as relics of the past, but as beacons of a lost wisdom that understood the deep connections between geometry, astronomy, and the very fabric of reality. His theories encourage us to reconsider the ancients' capabilities and the profound knowledge that may have been encoded in the monumental legacies they left behind.